you know, if you would have asked me five years ago, do you see yourself owning a salon? I would have said no, 100%. I never wanted to open a salon, even two, even two and a half years ago. If you would have asked me a month before I decided that this was what I was going to do, I would have told you you were crazy. I would never open a salon. My business partner and I created this concept of member, like a membership-based hair salon. So essentially, where you would normally come into a salon and you would come in and get your hair cut or your hair colored and just pay whatever the cost of that individual service was, we decided that there, well, we figured out that there's a better way that that, that could be handled. Um, and we created a membership model. So essentially what our clients can do is they pay a monthly fee based on whichever membership level that they're in, and they get unlimited services within that membership level. So we've got one for unlimited blowouts, which blowouts have been like all the rage in our industry for the last couple of years. There's one that includes color haircuts and blowouts, and then we have a men's membership, which is unlimited men's cuts. And what that's done is it's really changed the salon culture. So our clients can come in as often as they like. It's created a more um, dynamic relationship between our clients and, and, our, and our salon staff, which is really incredible to, to see. And then, it, again, it's a new model. So we're testing something that hasn't been done before, and it's, it's been wildly successful. So about a year before I opened my salon, which is called Society, there was this new phenomenon in the industry, and it was, it was blowouts. Obviously, uh, well, maybe not so obviously, but people have been getting blowouts for a very long time. But the birth of a new company dramatically changed our industry. So you would go in, um, they did like nothing other than blowouts. So you'd go in, get your hair blown out, and then leave. So as soon as they opened, within a couple months, we started to see a really dramatic shift in our business. We saw a lot of our clients not coming in. Our numbers were dropping, which means sales were dropping. And for an individual stylist, that was damaging uh, to our income, which you know is never a really fun realization. So I came up with a couple ideas of different things that I thought we could do to, to counteract what was happening and keep our clients in our business. Ultimately, um, I tried to pitch them to my manager, and it just wasn't a good fit for that salon. And that was really, like, it was a little painful for, for me and some of the other stylists to, to swallow because it was a lot of, a substantial portion of our income was gone. And there was really not much that we could do to get that back. We had to figure out a new way to earn it. And the new ways we were coming up with just weren't uh, gonna work where we were. So I was talking to a really good friend of mine and who is my business partner. And we just started going and I was pitching her some ideas and we were just going back and forth. And ultimately we came up with what is now society and you know decided that we should move forward on figuring out how to start something new. Um, something that, you know, obviously the industry was changing. So what could we do to not fall behind on some of these changes that were happening and, and be on the forefront of it and instead of you know, constantly trying to play catch up. So that was, in, that was kind of how the birth of our membership started. Um, and then from that point on, my mind was like completely and utterly dedicated to figuring out how to bring all of this into fruition. So uh, at that point, I knew absolutely nothing about running a business or how to start a business or anything related to business other than showing up at work, doing my clients and, and you know, collecting a paycheck. So for me, it was a lot of it was a lot of new learning. But luckily, I, I do love to read and I love to learn new things. So I, Google was my best friend. I googled absolutely everything, endlessly looked uh, looked up every like, absorbed anything I could read about opening a new business, whether it was a hair salon or not. Just figuring out you know what that entailed. The next step was fit, putting together a business plan because everything that I had read was put together a business plan. So. I slaved over this thing for about seven months, um, looked at a hundred different formats of what it should be like, what it should look like. Again, I didn't go to college for this, so I'm literally getting everything off Google. And anyone who's searched anything on Google, there are a million contradictions to everything you read. So I put together what I thought was a brilliant business plan and you know, encompassed everything I had read and had a little bit from here, a little bit from there. and. Um, I was like, cool, now what do I do with this? I have this, why don't I have a business yet? And um, you know, the next step was raising capital and which, you know, bringing, finding somebody to essentially fund the process of building the business. 
And I didn't know what to do. I didn't know kind of where to start with that. I didn't know what that looked like. So I started doing research on that. And then I, I got really lucky actually, which I think luck has a little bit to do with it. So I was at work and I was cutting one of my clients hair that I had been cutting for a very long time. We always connected over fishing and camping and hiking. And literally this was the day after I finished my business plan and he, I was like, hey, I never actually asked you if this is what you want to do for the rest of your life. And I was like, what do you mean? And he's like, like, just work here and cut hair. Like, that's awesome, but I just never asked you. And I was like, it's so funny that you asked me. I was like, actually, I thought that was the case. I was like, but um, I came up with this new business model and I want to start my own business. And he was like, oh, what does that look like? And I, you know, I gave him the details of our, our membership business and essentially, you know, what that would look like. And he was like, oh, you should come and sit down with me. And I was like, well, I'm talking, like, why would I do that? And he was like, do you not know what I, did we never talk about what I do for a living? And I was like, no. And he was like, oh, I own a venture capital firm. And I was like, I know that that means that you are, you know, you invest money in businesses. I was like, but like, isn't that more for like tech startups and, you know, everything in Silicon Valley? And, um, and he was like, he was like, no, no, we'll, we'll sit down and we'll talk. And, you know, gave me his personal phone number and was like, call me and we'll, we'll get together. So I went home and I was ecstatic because like this, you know, just fell into my lap and it was the most incredible thing ever. So I went home, I scheduled a meeting with him, um, you know, went through a bunch of, you know, bumps along the path leading up to finally opening, but ultimately was able to raise the funds that we needed in order to open this location. In terms of, um, for our individual location, what I learned along the process was that I was so far off and luckily far off in terms of what I thought it would cost us to open the business. When I was calculating it out, I was calculating as if we were going to build from, from nothing. So buying a piece of land, building a business, and you know the ground up is how much I could have encompassed with my original budget. We were very fortunate to find a location that was previously a salon, uh, which is a huge game changer if anyone is looking to open up your own salon business. I would definitely suggest if that is at all a possibility for you to, to definitely find a location that was. Uh, so we, we did, we found a, a location that was previously a salon, which um, cut our budget by, you know, more than in half. And, uh, and then I'm also very lucky to have a father who is a contractor and a builder by trade. So once we got the location, uh, the budget that we ultimately wound up getting was far less than I had originally anticipated. So, you know, what I had hoped to get and what I actually got was dramatically different, but it was enough and that's all I really needed. So we worked within the budget that we were given to make this happen. Uh, my dad and I slaved over this place for 29 days straight, 18 hour days building because as anyone who's ever lived in Los Angeles, rent on anything is wildly expensive. And uh, our landlord, unfortunately, didn't give us any leeway in terms of when the rent would start. We had one month of rent, of essentially rent free. And we were like, OK, well, then we need to start earning income in a month. So from the time we signed the lease, um, from the time I got funding to the time that I signed the lease was about a week. So I had a week to finalize and figure out everything. And then from the time we signed the lease to the t day that we officially opened and we're having our, our press launch party was 29 days. And we had to completely gut this entire salon and rebuild it from the ground up. And so, you know, working on a budget, we didn't have the we didn't have the budget to bring in a team to do this. So it was literally just my dad and I without a single other person for 29 days straight, no breaks, 18 hour days every single day. I thought I was going to die at the end of it. But hands down, the best experience of my life. Typically, I would say that owners, salon owners, are either making next to nothing because they're putting everything they have back into the business to keep it open, or they're doing really well. Um, and we're on that, we're on the growth up, which is really great for us. <laughs> for us, our focus is on making our business really profitable, keeping the money inside of the business so that as soon as we're ready, we can take everything that we've earned and open new locations. We will have to repay a portion of the funding that we initially received to start the business. Uh, and I'm very confident that that won't be an issue, which 
also feels really good. And the reason I'm confident about that is because we've been very systematic and strategic in terms of saving and creating a business and growing this business to a very sustainable point. My job as the owner encompasses anything from training new staff, hiring new staff, creating the schedules, running the business like day in and day out, um, creating the marketing plans, which is figuring out new strategies that's gonna work for the business, whether it's you know finding a new billboard or sending out you know, um, digital marketing campaigns, whether it's through social media or different kinds of ads, and then raising capital, so anytime when we first opened in terms of you know, raising the funds that we need to get open and then continuously looking for ways that we can expand. Often my goal is to bring new business into the salon. In Los Angeles, it's a really competitive market. Uh, so we're constantly, we're, everyone's competing for the same client's attention. So what we'll do is we'll come up with a creative concept, whether it's in particularly a photo shoot, and use that, use the images from the shoot to send out to either through social media campaigns or email marketing campaigns. In the past, we've actually used the images for billboard campaigns around the city, which has been really incredible. So uh, in terms of getting that project executed, um, I pretty much do it start to finish. So it's everything from you know deciding what the creative side of it's gonna be, like what do we want the end result to actually look like, and then finding the photographer, finding the models, organizing the team, getting our team together in terms of who wants to actually work on that particular project. And then model hunting, vetting models, seeing which one's gonna be like the best fit for the actual shoot. And then, you know, obviously day up and being here, doing the hair, getting the creative looking exactly the way we want it to. So knowing exactly what that image needs to look like for how we're gonna send it out. And then getting that image done and then everything after that from into post, which is gonna be editing the images and then sending them out through whatever um, channels we're gonna, we're gonna use, whether that's the billboard, email marketing or social media marketing. So in order to figure out whether the billboard or individual marketing ch uh, channel that we chose was successful, we have to do like one of two things. So for the billboard in particular, we will ask every client who calls in where they heard about us from. And the majority of the time we get pretty good feedback on that. Sometimes people are a little bit off, but most of the time people be like, oh my God, I saw that billboard of you guys over on Sunset Boulevard. Um, and we'll track it that way. We have a system in our computer that can keep track of that. And then if it's something that it's more digital, whether it's social media or email marketing, um, we have built in systems in place, whether it's through a company like MailChimp or Constant Contact that's gonna track that, those conversions for us. Our whole process for bringing in new business is, is very strategic um, and everything needs to be tracked, everything needs to be accounted for. Um, you want to just make sure, or I want to make sure that I'm focusing my energy in the right place all the time because I tend to be doing a little bit everywhere. So it's really important for me to make sure that I'm focusing my energy on the right thing that's working for us. So being able to track those conversions and strategically see what's working and what's not allows me to pick what works best and move forward in that direction and kind of not work with things that haven't performed well for us in the past. My worst day on the job was actually really terrible. So when we first opened Society, one of the things that we needed to do in Los Angeles was get a publicist, a PR agent. And so uh, I, Again, was really lucky to have a really good friend who re referred me to her best friend who is an incredible publicist. Um, so we started working with her right away. Over the first year of our relationship, she quickly became one of my dearest friends. Uh, worst day on the job was that she unfortunately passed away while we were working. And that was really, really difficult. She was, she was my teammate, even though she was not my business partner. She was my teammate through every single aspect of of the business and uh, that was really difficult. Or I, I attribute so much of our initial success to, to Courtney and the work that she did. So when she passed away, it was uh, difficult on every level, obviously on a personal level, I was shattered. Um, but on a business level, I felt like I had really lost like a leg of our, our, of our tripod. She did so much to make sure that we were wildly successful. And it was hard to come back from that because that was a side of the job that I had never 
learned how to do or had any desire necessarily to learn how to do. And so much of that is connection. So even if I wanted to learn that side of the business, it was just so much more than I could possibly take on. And I didn't know how to replace it either because she was so good at, the, at her job. Um, and we, because we had such a great relationship, it was um, the work that she did and the level, the quality of the work that she did and at what she was delivering for us and what we were giving back was just a relationship and a situation that could not ever be duplicated. And that was really difficult to have to come back and figure out how to, to balance after her passing. Um, and we only recently have been able to, you know, kind of figure out a new path to, to get down. That is, oh, it, that is different than what she was doing, but trying to get us back on that same path. So the best day of my job actually just happened really recently. Um, we have, I'm very proud of the team and the culture that exists within this location. I think the team that has been built here and that come and show up here every day and, you know, are working to create uh, this vision and this company that we all love is, uh, I, die, I would die for them. I love every single one of them so much. So the best day in the job was a day recently where a really good friend of mine who I went to hair school with, uh, her, the salon that she was at was closing down and a small group of four incredible women decided to come over and join our team. And the first day of having them join the existing team and just seeing how well everyone worked together and how happy everybody was, uh, it was it was incredible. It was Everyone was just coming up to me all day long and was just telling me how much they love the energy and how this is like, it was that little step that everyone needed to, you know, to feel like we were at, you know, continuously moving up at like the perfect time. And it was, it was, it was incredible. It was bliss. As an owner, again, I don't think that you're very limited at all. I think that like the only limits you're going to face are whatever limits you impose on yourself. So you can open one business and you can decide that that makes you really happy and you just want to, you know, keep that business running successfully for you know, the next 40 years, and I think that's beautiful. Or you can decide to, you know, turn that one salon into you know, uh, a big corporation and multi-location salon business. You can open up a chain of salons, which, you know, you're gonna get into franchising, then you could be a single salon owner, start a product line, and then wind up, you know, going down that path of getting into retail. Um, and then that could transcend in, back into owning a multi-location salon, you can also become a spokesperson uh, in, as a salon owner. And everything that you could do as a stylist, assuming you also have your cosmetology license, you could do as an owner and, and do the same simultaneously. It's just going to depend, again, on like what makes you happy and what kind of workload you're looking for and what drives you.